everybody my name is Lindsay welcome or welcome back to my booktube channel so Valentine's Day is coming up and to celebrate here on booktube not only am I wearing an extremely pink blouse but I have also put together a list of books which strongly feature two of my favorite things which are love and food the book recommendations in this video feature a variety of different foods as well as a variety of different types of love romantic love for Valentine's Day of course but also the love of family friends and found family I have read all of these books and I have enjoyed them so much and hope you check them out links to content warnings will be in the description and without further ado let me tell you about some of these delicious and wonderful books that I think you should check out. The first book I would like to recommend is Hungry Hearts edited by Elise Chapman and Caroline Tun Richmond. This is a young adult anthology of 13 stories by 13 best-selling authors and they all take place in Hungry Hearts Row. Hungry Hearts Row is a neighborhood full of family-owned restaurants, cafes, and convenience stores featuring food from many different cultures. Each main character in each story is a person of color and and not only is the book diverse in that way, but it's also diverse in the way that each story differs from the other in terms of tone and genre. There's a fluffy romance story, there's a story about a superhero, there's a story about ghosts. Some stories are funny, some are lighthearted, others are bittersweet and more heavy, others scared me a little bit. <laughs> there was one in there that may have been a thriller, may have been a horror, I'm not really sure, but... Wow. <laughs> and while this book does feature romantic stories, the main form of love expressed in this anthology is the love of family. The next book I would like to recommend is a standalone manga, and that is Our Dining Table by Mito Ori. This story follows Yutaka, an office worker in his 20s who, because of past emotional abuse, has trouble eating with other people, and so he never eats with other people, even though he's a very good cook. So he isolates and always has his lunch by himself, that is, until he is at the park one day and meets another man his age, Minoru, and his younger brother, Tane, and they invite him to come over to their house to teach them how he cooks so well. This is a wonderful truck that is passing by right now. This is a wonderful standalone manga with a touching found family story and a sweet romance. It also reminds me of the impact of sharing meals and how they can bring people closer together. The next book I'd like to recommend is a middle grade and that is Love Sugar Magic by Anna Mariano, the first book in the Love Sugar Magic trilogy. This book follows Leonora, an 11 year old Mexican American girl who has just found out a huge family secret. That secret is that the women in her family are all brujas and they have been putting magic into the cookies and cakes at their family bakery. Once Leonora knows about this, she decides to cast some spells of her own even though her family thinks she's too young to learn magic, and so she decides to do this behind her family's back. However, the spell that she uses to help her best friend Caroline does not go exactly as planned. So it's been some years since I read this, but I enjoyed it so much when I did, and I could practically smell and taste all of the sugary baked goods in this book. And I do remember really enjoying the interactions between Leonora and her family and her friends. I thought they were wonderful. I haven't read the next two books in this series, but I plan to. The next book series I have to recommend I read in its entirety just last year, and that is Kitchen Princess by Natsumi Ando. This shoujo manga series follows 13-year-old Najika who gets accepted into a prestigious arts academy for her baking skills. However, she has a secondary motive for going into this school other than becoming a great pastry chef. And and that is to search for a boy who saved her at a young age who she now calls her flan prince because he gave her flan when he saved her. The food element in this series is so strong and included in each omnibus are recipes from all of the sweet treats that Najika makes. There are also many different types of love expressed in this series. There's romantic love, there's found family love, as well as family love and a slow burn friendship. And there's also grief in this book which in the words of Jeannie Anderson is just love with no place to go. The main character in this series cares so deeply about everybody around her, very similarly to Toru from Fruits Basket, which to me made her very likable. And throughout the series, she creates very special and unique dishes for everybody that she comes into contact with. I am obviously recommending this series if you're looking for a book that features love and food, but I also want to point out that this cover makes the series look like it's very lighthearted and fluffy, and while it does feature those elements, it also deals with pretty heavy topics at times. Okay, so the next book that I have to recommend to you is definitely more beverage-based than food-based, 
but it's so heavily beverage based that I couldn't not include it in this video. And that is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshizaku Kawaguchi. This story is set in an underground cafe in Tokyo where it is rumored that you can travel back or forward in time. However, there are very strict rules to this type of time travel. For example, you have to sit in a specific seat in the cafe, you can't get up from that seat, and your trip is a very quick one because you do have to finish your time traveling before your coffee gets cold. And you also have to know that the person that you're visiting has either been to the cafe in the past or will be at the cafe in the future. As I've thought about this book, I've tried to come up with a word that correctly describes the reoccurring scene that happens in this book, where the waitress, Kazu, explains the rules to the customer, prepares their coffee, pours their coffee in the cup, and as the steam rises, the world shifts. I think the closest thing I can think of may be atmospheric. I'm an English major, I should really know the correct word <laughs> that I'm looking for. But anyway, I just love this recurring scene where the coffee is poured and time becomes measured by the temperature of the cup. But I also really enjoyed the four stories in this book, as well as the sequel, which is Tales from the Cafe, of people trying to come to terms with something very difficult that happened in their past or is happening to them now by traveling to the past or to the future to meet with someone who is very significant in their life. In this book, we meet with an ex-boyfriend, a husband, a sister, and a daughter. Speaking of beverages, the next book that I would like to recommend to you all is A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey. This young adult contemporary follows Lila, who has just lost three very important people in her life. Her abuela just passed away, her boyfriend just broke up with her, and her best friend just moved away. Out of concern for her well-being, her family decides that it's best to fly her out of her home from Miami and stay in England with her aunt for the summer. And when she goes to England, she ends up meeting a boy who decides that it's going to be his personal mission to show her the best parts of England as well as find her perfect blend of tea because he works in a tea shop. This book strongly features family love, found family love, friendship love, as well as romantic love from the friends to lovers trope. And this book is not just filled with scrumptious sounding teas, but also delicious sounding Cuban pastries. Lila is preparing to become the head baker at her family's panaderia in Miami, and so in England she decides to help out in the kitchen at her aunt's inn. I also want to point out that while this book does discuss grief and discusses it very well, it's also one of the coziest books that I've ever read. The next book that I have to recommend to you is Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. This book is a blend of fiction, sci-fi, and fantasy, and it follows three women when they meet in the San Gabriel Valley. Katrina Wen, a young transgender runaway whose violin is the most precious thing to her in the world. Shizuka Saitomi, a famous music teacher who has made a deal with the demon to deliver seven souls to hell in order to save her own, and she has one left, and so far the six out of the seven have all been students of her. Hers. And Lan Tran, a mother of four and a starship captain who has recently escaped an interstellar war and now owns a donut shop. So compared to the other books in this list, the food elements aren't a main focus of the story, but I couldn't not include it in this list because we spend a lot of time in Lan Tran's donut shop, and by the end of the book I was really craving donuts. In fact, I did go out and buy a donut in the weeks following. And without spoiling a thing, there were scenes that took place at the donut shop, at Shizuka's house over breakfast, and at other restaurants in the San Gabriel Valley that really stood out to me. And this is also another book that features many different types of love. We have family love with Lance family, found family love once Katrina finds a place to call home, as well as a budding romantic relationship between Lan and Shizuka as they get to know each other better. This book is so beautiful in its story and its message, but I would like to say that it does get very heavy at times, especially at the beginning, so if you're thinking of reading this book I would definitely recommend looking at the content warnings in the description and deciding if you're in a right headspace to read. It. Finally, I would like to conclude this video by talking about the love between a person and their cat and the beautiful story that came out of that, and that is Minette's Feast, the delicious story of Julia Child and her cat, written by Susanna Rake and illustrated by Amy Bates. This picture book follows Julia Child and her husband as they're living together in Paris, and they feel like something is missing until they meet Minette and adopt her into their family. Throughout this book, Julia Child is making delicious meals in the kitchen of her home, 
and Minette is dreaming not of Julia's dishes but of mice. This book features gorgeous illustrations and descriptions of Julia Child's cooking as well as a heartwarming story between a woman and her beloved cat. I read this book aloud to my cat Bruce and we both very much enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I just love books where the food and the love elements are both very strong so I was very excited to share these book recommendations with you. In the comments please let me know any books that you would recommend that feature both love and food. I know there are many more and I would love to read more. And if you'd like to leave an emoji in the comments just for fun, leave an emoji of one of your favorite foods or beverages. Thank you all again for watching and I will see you soon with another video. Bye everybody!